good evening students second days and prospective candidates who look forward to make a career in today's thriving post pandemic economy the jobs in the organized sector is back to normal level new opportunities are emerging in edtech e-commerce and various new age or and age technological ventures at this juncture on behalf of tracing foundation i welcome you all to this webinar apart from being approved by aict e ministry of education shri sharda institute of indian management research is also recognized by ministry of science and technology government of india as scientific and industrial research organization a noted research institution human development indian wisdom for management bhagavad gita for inspirational leadership as well as new age applied science shrisim is one of the pioneer institution in the country to adopt digital transformation and technology and its curriculum it is the first institution in the country to conceptualize pg program in digital leadership and transformation we shall now commence the program with the rendition of suktam chanting by our student miss preeti fulera thank you ma'am shruti smriti purana nam alayam karunalayam namami bhagavat padam shankaram lok shankaram shankaram shankaracharyam kesavam badrayanam shutra bhashya krito vande bhagavanto punah punah ishvaro guru atmati मूर्ति वेद विभागिने व्योम वद व्याप्त देहाय दक्षिणा मूर्त नम सदा शिव सरंभा शंकराचार्य मध्यमा अस्मदाचार्य पर्यता वंदे गुरु परंपरा थैंक यू प्रीति नाउ आई वुड लाइक टू इंट्रोड्यूस आर इंडस्ट्री मेंटोर मिस्टर तपस कुमार भुनिया Mr Bhunia has 29 years of industry experience in manufacturing business consulting and IT enterprise application services he has worked with organization like Raymond Ar- Arvin Mills TCG Price Waterhouse Cooper and ENY he is currently the associate director at Cognizant Technology Solution as solution architect and program delivery management within sap practice mr bhunia is a btech mba and chartered financial analyst by qualification over to you sir thank you uh, thank you professor ray uh, professor ahuja all the dignitaries and upcoming student young leaders so thanks for giving me this time slot for presenting and discussing with you for the upcoming technology challenges and the opportunities for new leaders in 21st century so uh, can i share my uh, slides thank you uh, thank you all of you so today actually i'll talk about you know so our um, young students or prospective students uh, what are their you know so career choices and while you are choosing your career what are the imperatives in this 21st century so are you really ready uh, to take up that challenge and do you know those opportunities coming up this 21st century i'll be discussing on that so before that uh, getting into the career choices and uh, upcoming opportunities in 21st century i'll recap you know our uh, history of human kind uh, so i'll not get too much time in here but just to highlight what was our differentiator as a species as a human kind and differentiator over other species and why we could evolve up to 21st century so just to recap you know so formation of the plant was around 4.5 billion years from now and you know so the human beings actually evolved 
around 2.5 million years from now in Africa. And around 300,000 years back, we started using fire. Around 70,000 years back, so our cognitive revolution started. And if you see only 12,000 years before, we had this agricultural revolution and we could domesticate animals and plants and we can start the permanent settlements. So and only 5,000 years before, so first kingdom started, probably some of you already remember that Hammurabi code, which was very famous. And since then that kingdom started and around 2,500 years before, so our invention of money, that is coin money and the transaction mode started, which is an universal mode of transaction. So from this page, actually from this slide, we can understand, you know, so throughout this revolution, evolution process, we acquired our cognitive skill and cooperation and innovations. So which other species could not, that's why humankind is actually, you know, dominating in this planet called Earth. So then in this period, we have actually developed our imagination power and hope for the future. See, today we talk about money. There are, you know, so multiple currencies from different countries. So it's an human imagination. There is no physical existence of money. It is only in the imagination. So for mode of transactions, that beautiful invention or came out only 2005 years, 2500 years before from now. And then only 500 years ago, our scientific revolution started and 200 years ago, the industrial revolution came up. Okay. And today in this present time, so we are, you know, so empowered with nuclear weapons that threaten the survival of the humankind, not only the humankinds, the entire organisms and species of this plant. So we are so advanced with our science and technology. So what is future then? What is left with us? For the futures, are we creating a superhumans? So that's the questions for today's discussion. So there is scientific revolution and this today's era, the intelligent design is the core of our strength for the humankind. So now I'm coming to the recent days. Recent days means 20th century, which we completed in the year 2000. Now we are in the 21st century. So in 20th, 20th century, the biggest challenge was some people exploiting other people. But in 21st century, maybe the biggest conflict of all will be about irrelevance. So whether we are relevant today, whether we'll be relevant tomorrow, that's the biggest challenge of 21st century. So then how do you continue to stay relevant? If, for example, some student or expert in sales marketing, some student expert in supply chain planning, some are expert in human resource management. So our skill will be sustaining for our professional career next 30, 30 40 years. That's the question to us, whether it will be relevant till the end of our professional career in this 21st century. So all of us has studied in business school, this S curve. I don't need to explain everyone or all of us, we have studied the S curve, but this studies, our learning is from 20th century. So is it still relevant in 21st century? It is somewhat true, somewhat not. In 21st century, there will be number of punctured jump S curve. So which will be, you know, so creating a elevated S curve in this 21st century. So you can imagine we are not stopping here. We are actually elevating all our development very fast rather than super fast speed. So what is the obstacle to achieve this super fast speed? or advancing ourselves. 
our main obstacle is you know so our learning of 20th century so that we are burdened with our old learnings so way we think way we work that still continues from 20th century we the seniors still you know guide our students and youngsters with our burden of 20th century knowledge so 21st century somewhat is different and complex so how it is complex we'll understand today so if you see the history of information technology and the flow of information in the only in the recent past in last less than 20 years that mobile technology and the internet technology came up and the massive global information flows started that digitization and its exponential impact started not only that socially created information is most important today whether we go to office we go to shop shopping mall or we do our day to day work but we engaged into social media and share our information so we are generating huge amount of data and information flow through our social platform so that is how it is very complex because multiple millions and millions of data is created every day and it is a massive information flow actually impacting our decision making process so earlier we used to say whosoever has the asset asset means gold it's a building it can be machines plant these are assets as per our 20th century knowledge but today asset is less important access is more important access to what access to data so those who are from finance background can understand and they might have access already bloomberg terminal so you have seen the billions of billions of data being generated and it is pumping to the system whether you can analyze that data and take a right decision so that you can be stay ahead of the competitions that's the challenge to us today okay so before this 21st century so our speed was quite linear if we go for 30 linear steps we go 30 meters but today it is an exponential steps if we take 30 steps probably 25 times you are actually revolving around the globe so that's the kind of speed today in the age of digitization so on top of that the socially created information which is very very significant today and advanced technology giants are already processing advanced algorithms to process those data and taking a decisions in fact they are influencing our decisions today which cloth which fashions we are going to buy that is being motivated that is being directed by the social media okay so but this 21st century is not about only technology so there are a lot of complex problems are coming to our foray and you can see around us there are inequality there are poverty still we are struggling after so many years so of agricultural revolution there are hunger there are poverty inequality injustice and people are displaced from their origin so there are huge problems and it's not restricted to one country it is across the multiple countries and everything all decisions of international relations are actually influenced by economy and economy is being driven and being decided by huge advanced technologies and that particular issues and challenges creating a lot of uncertainty so <coughs> yesterday our priority was we'll be graduating or doing our masters and getting into a job office job with the conventional jobs like sales, marketing, accounts, finance, and similar kind of job. We'll be going to office nine o'clock, coming back five o'clock. So those kind of routine things are going to be out. If you are thinking and considering a career in the conventional way, so this is the future. The conventional jobs are 
running out very fast. So let's understand what is that complexity and the complex systems around us. What is complexity? So complex system is one that has the capacity to respond to its environment in more than one way. See, in a situations where you don't have linear linearity, you have multidimensional options to take a decision so that you can actually solve a problem. Okay. So this linearity was actually invented during the industrial age when the industrial revolution came in last 200 years of history. So everything we considered a linear in a machines, we think still we, today, we think mechanically. If we push this way, it will move this way. No, this industrial age conceptions is going, getting changed very fast. So conception of machine movement is actually going out. So forget about linearity and efficiency. So earlier we used to think in the industrial age, the efficiency is the key, but it is slowly getting obsolete. So efficiency becomes obsolete. So earlier we think the, our decision making and the order will come from top to top down process. So boss will give the instruction and we will work accordingly. Every day morning we go to office, we try to find out what is the instruction from my boss, then we will follow accordingly. Friends, those days are gone. So top down approach is completely and very fast it is going out of market. So then what is that? So the new age is talking about more matrix structure where different team will be working together and jointly take the decision for a, you know, so wisdom for the group, wisdom for the community, wisdom for the company. It's not the individual order which will work in this age. In our industrial age, the legacy was built for stability and equilibrium. We cannot actually afford to have uncertainty and inequilibrium. Always we thought of stability, equilibrium, the rigid internal boundaries. This is your role. So every time we ask people, what is your roles? What is your responsibilities? So those are boundaries. So there was controls. So you cannot go beyond your limit. Those kind of controls were there in the legacy, but slowly it is getting obsolete. In 21st century, we need, we are talking about build for agility and speed. So the situations will be completely unknown. You have to face those situations and you have to be agile in your approach so that you can solve the problem in a very faster manner. Highly porous boundaries. There is no fixed boundaries. See today, if there's some technology is evolving, so tomorrow it will come to India and from some technology is evolving in San Francisco today. So it will reach, you know, Beijing tomorrow. So that kind of, you know, so porous boundaries we have in today's world. So what is the problem to us to adopt that kind of digital environment and agile environment? So problem is that we want to be agile but we are weighed down by the burden of process. We cannot forget the process oriented work. Even today in our kind of industry also, our leaders say, follow a process. What is your process? You have to evolve. You have to work through a process only. On the one hand, you want to be agile. Another side, another hand, you want to burden with the process. That's a really oxymoron. We want to be innovative, but we measure everything for efficiency. We want innovation. So can you really judge the person with efficiency? No. So those kind of challenges we are facing in day to day world. So let's understand what is complex, what is simple. So in 20th century, if there is something known unknowns or known knowns, we call it as simple problem. And if something is little unknown, we say it is a complicated problem. So we have handled in 20th century simple and complicated. But in 21st century, 
it's really complex what is complex these are unknown unknowns means we don't know what is going to happen tomorrow and the last thing is the chaotic situation completely unknowables we don't know what is going to happen so that is disruptions so we don't know what is going to happen so we need to understand this complexity and we have to prepare ourselves in that way i have tried to bring certain dimension here so that you can compare efficiency versus adaptability i am not going to discuss in detail but just to picking up few points and later on i can share this document so that everyone can be benefited from, from here so in our earlier efficiency driven leadership was focus attention on objectives we used to say what is the objective of this project what is the objective of the company clarify roles of individuals those kind of leadership we are habituated with but now the leadership is adaptability so in the adaptability uncover the opportunities you have to come out with the new opportunities new innovations increase variety by sensing needs you have to sense the new needs new challenges then only you can adapt to the new environment so there are two different type of organization and two different type of leadership so change in leadership is very important in today's world so this is the efficiency mindset and this is adaptive mindsets okay so in the efficiency mindset there is a authority so everything goes by authority whatever authority says we follow it but in adaptive mindset multiple teams will be working together and various stakeholders will be working for a particular objective or particular innovation project so if you remember in my first slide so i came up with a point that so human beings are different because they can cooperate with a large number of people even we do business with people whom we never met we don't know suppose suppose i am a export marketing officer i am traveling to a completely unknown country and meeting completely unknown person we can agreed on a certain price point and a service guarantee and we can make a business so our core competency as a human being is our cooperation to a large scale so only one person in an authority role cannot actually dominate a company so we have to work together cooperate each other then only we can expect a huge innovative ideas innovative product and innovative services so earlier we thought of you know so leaders we are completely infatuated with leaders we have heard of very famous leaders we follow their guidelines principles sometime we buy books to understand their life biographies and all but believe me in 21st century so leaders are not important but leadership is more important when you talk about the leadership of indian leadership so indian leadership means our leadership on technology innovation our leadership on agricultural innovation our leadership on manufacturing technology and so on and so forth a single leader will make the magic work like a god so those kind of thought process will be completely eliminated in 21st century so what are the challenges of complexity so we we'll talk about complex world so processes that were once effective become bureaucratic if you don't understand the complexity you will the symptoms will you will face the symptoms in your company or your organization your processes that were once very effective now become bureaucratic the time taken to implement a decision feels out of control you will not be able to control so you need to understand the complexity of the subject so accordingly you have to design your solution so earlier in 20th century as i told you the challenges was the exploiting the resources the resources can be the machine can be raw material 
can energy can human capital and all those but in today so explore so where do you spend most of your time you have to spend more of your time not in exploiting the resources but exploring the new possibilities new opportunities okay so it is very important for the transformation of the organization and of course the transformation of an individual professional in 21st century mind tools will be dominated by generosity empathy curiosity humility and openness so what is that the way forward for us so we have discussed the challenges we understood what our what is our core capability we understood what was our mode of working in 20th century challenges in 21st century but what is the way forward where we are moving now so what is that complexity get prepared for and understand the complexity of the world around you dear young leaders for tomorrow so you have to understand the complexity of the world around you know your core capability build around that it is very important before choosing a career what is your core capability are you strong in particular subject are you strong in communication are you strong in writing mathematical algorithms where you are capability is lying with make a right choice earlier in your career sometimes we think okay tomorrow we'll be passing out graduating from institutes and we'll be doing the jobs then we'll think after 10 years then what is our suitable spot for a career no it is very important to choose the right career at the earlier age think innovative whatever you do mind that you are a citizen of digital world okay bring a long term view of the strategic choices to overcome existential 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 challenges of the species so strategic choices are very important today you have already heard of nuclear war ecological collapse all those huge challenges but probably you are not familiar with technological disruptions and that's the new monster so technological disruption can create a havoc so you need to understand and take a strategic choices towards that so when the technology might disrupt human society the very meaning of human life it can destroy creation of global useless class and rise of data colonialism and data dictatorship so when there is an advantage of data advantage of digital technology there are all possibilities of disruption of our human society as well so you need to be very careful i'll come to that for example so today a technology skill set with which i am doing a job maybe tomorrow that will be obsolete so in 21st century please ready for get ready for frequent skill upgrade so can you imagine for an example a 50 years old truck driver will reinvent himself or herself as he or she is going to lose his or her job to self driving vehicles many of us heard of self driving vehicles it is under trial so maybe within a decade this will actually snatch the job of truck driver so what will this 50 years old truck driver will do tomorrow that's a real question to us and believe me the artificial intelligence the technology is still evolving it has not come to its full potential once it will come in in its full potential there will be huge technological disruptions and the you know the professionals who are very much satisfied with their current portfolio they might face a face a huge challenge tomorrow so i'll take five more minutes um, this might be you know last critical slides so in our digital society so there is a huge impact on our international relationship also so i am putting the you know so putting across the larger picture because so this digital adoption will actually create a will actually create a international, international relation challenge 
I think there is a link over. Am I audible? Am I audible? Yeah, there is some problem of echo. Uh -huh. Is there is there any other microphone switched on at your end? Mm, no. No. Okay. Uh, I think now it's better. Yeah, yeah, now it is okay. It's okay. 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 So major challenge we'll be facing. Number one is irrelevance and inequality. <clears throat> So in 20th century, there was an exploitation. Those who fail in this century to adapt, you know, the technology or digital environment, they will struggle against irrelevance, would constitute a new useless class, useless from the viewpoint of economic and political system. This is a huge challenge for the people who will not be able to cope up with the latest technology. The unprecedented inequality is expected in the next few decades. Two, there will be two classes. Suppose not only the two classes within a country, but between the two countries. Some country is adopting advanced technology. Some country is not able to adapt. Then there will be a huge inequality. So wealth versus bankrupt and data colonies. So what is that? So the data and the artificial intelligence can actually earn a huge wealth for you. The AI will create immense wealth for you. And the few high tech hub like advanced countries, they will be controlling that wealth while others will either go bankrupt or become exploited data colonies. So leads to so that what will be you know, so going to impact in our international relationship or political environment. In the 19th century, probably you have heard of that. So countries like Britain and Japan industrialized very fast and they exploited most of the world elsewhere. In the 20th century, if we are not careful, in 21st century, the artificial intelligence, we're already in the midst of artificial intelligence arm race between US and China and leaving most of the countries far behind. So we don't know what is going to happen once there will be, you know, so multidirectional race of artificial intelligence across the countries. So data capacity is very important and it can be used for, you know, so our advantage also. Like imagine a day when a company sitting in San Francisco or in Beijing will come to know on a real time basis, the mental capacities and weaknesses, medical conditions and personal history of our politicians, judge and the journalist and our policymakers. Do you expect a developing country will still be independent country or become a data colony? It is a real questions to us. When there will be huge data and information and we are capable to process that, we don't need to send a soldier. So we can hack the data and we can actually cripple the entire economy. So here is a, my danger formula, B into C into D equal to A double H. What is that? The biological capabilities. If you have the enormous biological knowledge, about the human capability, about the human brain, and you have the computational power. And if you have the computational power and data processing capability, any human being can be hacked. Any human being can be hacked. So all of us are hackable animals. So you can understand with our digital technology in one side, we can get help to get improve our health technologies. Our modern life can be more comfortable. But if you cannot take the right decision at the right time, so it can be a hazardous to our society, to our independence also. So it is my appeal to the young leaders to save the humankind. 
to save the human kind the power to hack human can be used in good purposes also you please use that for the good purpose only so like providing much better healthcare with artificial intelligence but if this power falls in the hands of 21st century stalin then it will be disaster so probably you have heard it or accessed a newspaper notification or newspaper news in the media in the year 2020 north korea dictator asked the citizen to wear a biometric bracelet which can monitor the blood pressure heart rate brain activity 24 hours hour a day if that happens not only this medical parameters actually your great leader can understand whether you are clapping and smiling or smiling when you are listening to that great leader or angry you are angry inside so they can access and understand your attitude your condition of brain then you will be facing the consequence accordingly so in this today's day so humans rely more and more on artificial intelligence to take decisions we are already in the era of algorithms and digital dictatorships is already started the authority will shift completely from humans to the algorithms you have already heard of google algorithm facebook algorithm netflix alibaba and so on and so forth so with this route or with if we if this is the destiny so will completely will be philosophically bankrupt and fail to conceptualize the new heaven or the new human kind so it is in the hands of our young leaders whether we are going to use properly the artificial intelligence in 21st century properly or not so with this i'll be concluding my session so probably i have shut out some more time sorry for that so i'll be asking a, you know so end questions to our young leaders what is the skill you believe to be a future proof my answer is the psychological construct of strength of purpose so you study on the this topic and probably we'll talk on this later on if i get some opportunity so with that thank you all of you for listening me and and sorry for taking extra time professor roy and professor ahuja i am sorry for that thank you sir now i introduce our academic advisor professor of eminence and chairman academic senate professor k k ahuja he has an ex- he has an experience of more than 40 years and has managed diversified profiles in various leading public undertaking and private organization he was the director on board of various companies of dalima group he was the member of the board and director hr at gujarat heavy chemicals limited and director hr at napino he is a btech mechanical mba from fms delhi and ms from oxford university he is a consultant in hr domain to many leading organizations in india and abroad over to you sir good evening everybody it was indeed pleasure to hear mr tapas kumar bhunia very good lecture very informative and i'm sure uh, each one of us have uh, gathered lot of information he has given an insight of future what is likely to happen what sort of skills are going to be there where he has left i'm going to take it from there on i was going through a report uh, indian skill report 2011 which says that only 45.9% of the indian graduate were employable and there is a decline over the past two years usually there is a disconnect between the curriculum taught in universities and the job requirement recent uh, nescom study suggested that by 2020 two out of the three millennial would take up managerial job and the skill set required 
by the industry are different. Now, what are the skill set required by the industry? They want creative thinking, higher level problem solving, innovation, interpersonal skills, decision making. These, in addition to these, the softer skills will continue to rule. That is leadership, attitude, communication, and other behavioral aspects. The world is definitely going through a difficult and uncertain times due to pandemic era. The resilience and adaptability of individual get tested in such times only. The ultimate mayor of an individual is not where he stands in the moment of comfort and conveniences, but where he stands at the time of challenges. Not getting disheartened in these times, but it calls for living up with undaunted spirit of staying ahead. Most of the participants here are PGDM or MBA from reputed management institutes and have are going to possess or have possessed the skills such as communication because a lot of emphasis is put in the institution on the communication skills, positive attitude, comprehensive analytical skills, strategic skills, and leadership skills. Now, when you enter corporate world, where things are changing very fast, the pace of change is mind-boggling. Means, uh, Mr. Tapas was telling how things have moved from 17th century, 18th century, 19th century, and 20th century. And he highlighted also the pace of change has been so high that most of the things have taken place during the last 200 years. Only 700 years before we started communicating with each other. Otherwise, most of the time, out of the 800 times of 62 years since the man has come on the earth, 62 times, 650 times the man remained in caves and not much of development was done, except for taking the raw meat to cooked meat. So, but now, if we see these last 50, 60, 70 years, we have seen almost everything and the pace of change or the job profile or the KRAs, everything is changing so fast. You know, the organization structures are getting revised every um, one month or two months. The, as he rightly said, the matrix organizations are the governing factor. So, the expected skills which the corporate is looking for is the vision, versatility, focus, patience, and sensitive to the relation. The other day, I was in an institute, Tricolite Electrical and uh, Manufacturing Company. They are the leader and a pioneer in the panel making company. They are the engineer trainees. There, I was talking to the engineer trainees. They have inducted quite a large number of engineer trainees as the management trainee. So, they, their curiosity was to find out how they succeed in life or in their profession. I suggested two things to them. Will to work and skill to work. Develop will to work and acquire skill to work. Skill comes from your experience. Understanding one role, profile, process, technology, organizational dynamics. And will comes from within, from the desire to deliver. It comes from self-motivation. It's come from inspirations from others. It comes from the positive strokes which you give it to yourself. 
I can do it. I'll do it. With skill and will, you acquire competence. That is the ability to deliver with clarity of goals and purpose. For understanding, we need to discuss two prime areas. That is overcoming self-imposed failure and positive approach to life. Now I'll shift to some presentation which will give you about these two concepts. Now, what is uh, overcoming self-imposed failure? Best example to understand this is a joint creature, elephant, can pick up 2,000 pounds with its trunk. Is tied to a little wooden stake Yet it is calmly stays there tied. Why it happens like this? It happens because when the elephant was just a baby, not very strong, it was tied by a huge chain to an iron stake that would not be moved. Regardless of how hard it tried, it was not possible for him to move. It could not break chain and run free. After a while, it just gave up. Later, when really the elephant became strong and can do anything, he never attempted. He never tried to be free. The imprint is permanent. I cannot, I cannot say. What he messages he has given to himself at that point of time that I tried many times, I couldn't succeed, so I can't be successful. That's the negative stroke which he has given it to himself at that time. That is not making him to move forward. Likewise, there are millions of people who believe like this elephant. They have best, they have been bound tight and told, you'll never make it. Even I have seen many parents. What to talk of others? They keep telling their children, you can't do anything. You are useless. All the time they are giving the negative strokes to their own children. Instead of telling them, don't worry. This one-time failure is not everything. You will succeed. No, instead of that, they will also join in a sad moments and keep telling him, okay, leave it. Okay, leave it. So that's what is the coming out of the shackles. So today, eliminate the source of your limitation. Anybody who criticizes you, you be away from them. Because if you have a self-belief, if you have a understanding of yourself, that is self-esteem is high, that yes, I'm a capable person, I can deliver, I'm a hardworking. So then in that case, you will deliver. But if you start with it, Try karte hai, ho gaya, ho gaya, nahi hua, nahi hua. then you will never able to do it. So when you mentally break free, the boundaries will be removed from you. It's the nature of a man to rise to greatness if greatness is expected of him. If an organization, it is same thing holds for an organization also. If an organization gives an opportunity to an individual to grow, to learn, to take risk, then in that case, he will definitely take it. Now, this is something, right example for this. There is bubble B. The body weight is not right. And according to aerodynamics, the bubble B cannot fly. But ignoring these laws, the B flies anyway. So it is with the attitude that we can achieve miracles. You achieve miracles. So first and foremost is, that we should mentally prepare ourselves that yes, we can do it. Don't compare yourself with anyone in the world because everybody is designed. God has made ev every individual a unique piece and everybody has been sent to the earth with a specific task and work. So always remember you are different. On some account, somebody may be superior to you. On the other accounts, you will be superior to you. So don't compare yourself. 
If you compare, you are insulting yourself. No one will manufacture lock without a key. Similarly, God won't give problems without a solution. Have faith in Him. Focus yourself. Acquire the adequate competency and work toward it. Every successful person has a painful story. Every painful story has a successful ending. Accept the pain and get ready for success. No one can go back and change a bad beginning. If something has happened, it happened, it has gone. But anyone can start now and create a successful ending. So it is with you only. One opportunity lost doesn't mean the life is lost. If a problem can be solved, no need to worry about it. If a problem cannot be solved, what is the use of worrying? If you miss an opportunity, you fill the eyes with tears. It will hide another better opportunity in front of you. What a beautiful line it is. That one opportunity missing is no problem. Maybe you have a better opportunity waiting for that. Mistakes are painful when they happen. But years later, the collection of mistakes is called experience, which leads to success. I'm not going too many into this. Now, you know that the average life has only 960 months or 29,000 days. It reminds us that time to do what we want to do is now. You do not need a title to show some leadership, but need to remain only positively reinforced, positive attitude. If you have the positive attitude, you can achieve anything. There is a big difference between saying I failed and I am a failure. Never say I am a failure. Never. There is no disgrace in, in disgrace in saying that I failed which is just a fact of life, but you should never say, I am a failure. Because you are a failure only when you have decided to give up. In boxing, you are never declared lost the game. You are never declared lost in the game when you fall down. But when he counts 1 to 10, and when you are not able to get up again, that is the time you have failed. No one is a failure who can truly say, I have done my best. The basic rule of success. Now, after this, I'll give you some other beautiful uh, presentation. This I am closing down. And going to another place. पेटीएम हो जाएगा ना यही है हां भाई लेट्स टेक अ एग्जांपल इमेजिन लाइफ एज अ गेम इन व्हिच यू आर जगलिंग सम फाइव बॉल्स इन द एयर यू नेम देम एज वर्क फैमिली हेल्थ फ्रेंड्स and attitude. You are keeping all of these in the air. You will soon understand the work is a rubber ball. If you drop it, it will bounce back. But the other four balls are family, health, friends, and attitude. They are all made of glass. If they will fall, they will break. They will affect your life. If you drop one of these, they will never be the same. How? Don't undermine your worth by comparing yourself with others. As I said earlier, we are different as each of us is special. Don't let your life slip through your fingers by living in the past 
are for the future. By loving your life one day at a time, you live all the days of your life. Don't give up when you still have something to give. Nothing is really over until the moment you stop trying. Don't run through life so fast that you forget not only where you have been, but also where you are going. Now, the, these all things are to reverse the statement made by, by Peter. What, what he said that, I'll just come to that later, it just one. Okay, after this. Okay, after a few more slides, then I'll come to that. Don't run through your life so fast. You know, this is to maintain the pie chart of your life, where you have to spend for your job, where you have to spend time for your family, where you have to spend time for your personal well-being also, and also for the society and for self-development. All these areas need some time in your life. If you spend 90% of your time on your job, then your total work life cycle will get started. You will rise, but you will not go beyond a certain level. You, will, you might achieve something, but you will end up much earlier than what is required. So plan your life in a way that you grow in the real sense. Success does not mean achieving lopsided, but success depends upon achieving overall satisfaction in most of the things which you like. This... Uh, Lockdown period has given an opportunity for most of the people to spend time on their uh, particular things which they liked, that is hobbies. They developed some of their hobbies. Some were good at music, but uh, because of the heat of work and because of the occupation and the profession, they forgot all those. But then when it came to work from home situation and they had a time, then they pursued that and they really enjoyed their life for that. So that instead of being feeling lonely, depressed and there, you diverted your channel energy and then directed it to the positive side of the story. Don't forget a person's great, great emotional need is to feel appreciated. Don't use time or words carelessly. Neither can be retrieved. Life is not a race, but a journey to be savored each step. Now, with these inputs, I have charged you enough. Now, I want to give you I think I have gone out. Have I gone out? No, no, you are there, sir. We oh, can hear you. So it's perfect, Dalit. Perfect, Dalit. Then, what needs to be done is to have a positive approach to life. Pessimists see the difficulty in every opportunity. Uh, sir, okay. but your uh, PPT is not visible. No, PPT I've stopped. Okay. Huh. Now there is no PPT. I'll show only in the end. When I'm going to end, then I'll show one PPT. But now I'm going to talk about summarizing all what I have talked so far. So I've, uh, the first point which I said after this is that pessimistic sees the difficulty in every opportunity. And optimists see an opportunity in every difficulty. Life is filled with different kinds of problems. Not everybody is successful and happy as most people do not know what they want from life. If you have a positive attitude, you will think the glass half fill. Pessimistic as no, 
will always look at the glass as half empty. The life is a 10 to 90 principle, where life is 10% of what happens to you, on which you have no control. If you are caught up in a traffic jam and neither you can move forward nor you can go backward, now it depends how you spend that, how this, that 90%, how you spend that 90% to attend that 10%. So 90% depend on how you respond to 10% if no control scenario. So it is for you to be happy listening music. It is for you. You may lie down and uh, have a nap because if the driver or the shepherd driven car is there. But if it's something else in a different situation, handle it like this. You can reach, if you reach an airport, and you are informed that the flight is delayed by two hours. Now, how you react to that situation? It depends from individual to individual. You may buy, a, you have an option to buy a book and snacks and spend your time going over a cup of coffee or go out, shout at the airline office and create a negativity around. Everybody will come and see you shouting and the, Airport authority will try to pacify you. So that could be another situation. The behavior of people in such situation differ from person to person. Why I'm telling, if this is the right frame of mind you have, you will definitely succeed in the corporate. But if you do not have the right frame of mind, if you do not become the part of the group, Even you may be very intelligent. Your individual intelligence does not play that important role. But your team working, carrying the team and being a part of the team and uh, projecting over a period of time as a leader is the success story. Some instant it start shouting and a few gets uncontrollable anger which gets manifested into abuses and even assault of time. Who is loser? You are the loser. So even in organization, you have a choice of making good friends. Or you have a choice of making large number of um, people to, uh, uh, to be indifferent to you. May not be enemy, but indifferent to you. So when you need a work to be done immediately and you approach them, they will say, I'll do it, I'll do it. They will not provide you the right cooperation. And these are some of the difficulty which the these MBAs, because they think they have known everything. And they go to the shop floor, they stand erect as they have come from IIT or they have come from IM or they have come from another big institution. And uh, they need not worry about this. The people should come and tell them. It never happens. You have to become part of them. Whatever is their designation, that should become your designation in mind and start interacting with them. You, They will tell you everything. The barriers will be broken at that point of time when you interact with them. So your behavior, that is your interpersonal skills, are very important to be successful in the new assignment. Because you do not know the skill. The skill has to be learned. And to learn the skill, you have to accept them as a teacher. And then you learn from them. So you, they are your teacher for that specific assignment. And you picked up that assignment. And then same, if you see the army set up, it is the subedar. He may hit you also. He may abuse you also. He may keep you standing in the sun also. But the moment you complete your training and you become lieutenant or second lieutenant, he is the one who will salute you. Thereafter, whole life he will salute you. Thereafter, whole life he will salute, he'll salute you. you. So that is, that is what is the sound is some problem. Now it is okay, sir. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> Uh, 
look at things around you and you have a choice either to create negativity sadness fear anger depressed and uh, depression or create positivity and happiness happier people do not necessarily have the best of everything remember but best of everything that comes along the way but make the be <laughs> the best of things as a happy moment who is the most important person for you that person is you be the driver of your destiny and understand the priceless gift the joy of work the joy of living through positive mental attitude the potential of average person is like a huge ocean unsailed unexplored a world of possibilities waiting to be realized toward some great good most of us use 10% of their potential if you use as much as 25% you become genius you need to free your mind from clutter for creating more space for growing your potential so you have to plan you have to have a plan of action you need to be a life long learner don't think you have acquired mba so you have learned everything no this mba will probably the education might take you for 2 3 years unless you acquire new skills this has given you a platform to enter an organization but then the organizational skills you need to learn and you have to acquire the competency to have the potential for the next higher position again acquire knowledge and competency to go for the next this there is a peter principle each one of us is trying to reach the level of incompetence each one of us then question comes is then why we are given annual increment why we are given raise every year question is some some uh, lose competence in an early age and some continue with their competence even after 70 years 80 years so it all depend upon whether you are learning continuously or not whether you are acquiring the new skills which the organization demand and as sir has told the new skills which are coming up are you getting familiar with those skills so that is important the peter principle can can be overcome only by continuous self learning so make it a point that i am cut out for present i have to prepare myself for the future and then prepare yourself for that position and then again prepare yourself for future and continue with this you will be competent all your life. there are people i have seen they in the age of 90 they are physically fit they are mentally alert and they are able to give beautiful advice and they keep themselves informed of what all is happening around them they know probably what is happening in ukraine war more than most of the young people know it so they keep themselves in touch with the world they Uh, they are good at relations they are uh, good with the society they are good with themselves they are good with the family if you ask their children if their friends and everybody will say he is a nice person so how could he maintain such a good contact relation the other thing is only by being in the world living everything interacting at all places so learn to live in present than in the past i am a topper you can't carry the word topper for a long time you know your institute also do not matter after 2 3 years nobody will ask you your mba mba okay nobody will ask you your institute because people have seen you work for 3 years they know it launch yourself on every wave need to work smarter and wiser and continuous fight life is a continuous fight 
and i end my uh, presentation with one short movie of around 3 minutes which you will love to see fight till end is the title of this the sound is not coming mm. sound is not coming it is 100% here i think now it has started the song started na ha correct even the sound is not there you will be able to understand it okay the title is to fight till end so uh, uh, you must have seen how uh, the last minute fight and how everybody joined and made the <laughs> tiger to run away same way is the life so suppose for example on reaching your workplace you find lift is broken and there is no way to top floor except stairs don't feel dejected instead look as an opportunity to reflect on your fitness and check if you will be able to run up the stairs as you did your childhood we must remember that problem will accompany us till our heart beats positivity is the first step 
in overcoming hurdles. No problem can be solved or no mission can be accomplished until your heart says, I can do it. Bring on. With such an approach, everything in this world will appear beautiful. So with this message, so you move into your corporate life, start it humbly, make friends, continuously learn, but hard work is the key. Remember, hard work is the key. Now, eight hours job is no more there. Timings will be here and there, depending upon what is the job profile you have, whether you are working with America, whether you are working with Australia, wherever, whatever you are doing. But keep your attitude positive and focus yourself. Have self-belief, the above all, and no uh, bad feeling for self. That is, self-esteem and self-belief are, are one side. That is one of the key pillars. I can do it. I am capable. I have done it earlier. I will do it now. With these words, I wish all the best. You have good job, you have good experience and grow in your life. Okay? Thank you. Sir. Thank you so much, sir. Now, I would like to introduce our Senior Director and Dean, Professor Amlan Ray. Professor Ray has 27 years experience in corporate houses, consulting training and academia with various companies, including Resin, Forbes and Jan Group. Professor Ray is a B.Tech and M.B.A. from University of Calcutta and submitted his Ph.D. thesis at Amrita Vishwa Vidya Pitam Coimbatore in the area of international business. Now I request Sir to deliver his talk and summarize today's session. Over to you, Sir. Thank you so much, Kajal, ma'am. I hope uh, I am audible to everybody. Yes, Sir. So without uh, much ado, I will go for my session and I will limit it considering the time constraint. I will just show you three slides. And after that, I have already received a couple of questions. With that, I will go to my esteemed panel, Professor Ahuja and uh, Mr. Bhuya. I have uh, one or two questions for you, which are from the audience. Mm -hmm. So uh, when I start my presentation, today's session was career in the post-pandemic era for the MBA graduates. So let's say when we talk about MBA graduates and their options, so that time comes the question of our macro environment in which we are studying, we are working, and we are looking for further opportunities. And that's our country, India. So whatever is India's strength, obviously that becomes our strength as well. So I just use my slide and I will limit it only within three slides. So first and foremost, I hope it is uh, visible. Can yes, you see sir. the slide? Yeah. Yes. So what is India's strength and what is your strength? The aspiring MBAs, the MBAs who are going to the job market very soon. India is a very, very young country. So we often talk about demographic dividend. So generally when a company comes with a foreign direct investment, they look for the skilled manpower in the country. And they know that if they come to India, they can get lots of professionals skilled with various new technologies, including IT. And these people can work for those companies which have come to India. That's why a lot of companies are outsourcing their jobs to India, looking at the demographic dividend. Next, we know that we have already gone through a telecom revolution in this country, and almost everybody, including the rural areas, are connected with mobile phones. And believe me, the data price in India is comparatively much less compared to other parts of the world. I have been associated recently with a project of MasterCard Foundation, 
which was in Nigeria. And we have seen that how the school students could not take part in the online education because of the high data price. And fortunately in India, this is not there. I do agree that there is digital divide. Rural India is not as well connected as the urban India, but still data price is very, very cheap. Even a prepaid connection gives you 1.5 GB data. So now it's up to you that whether this 1.5 GB data you will use for playing PUBG or you will use for doing some online course. I probably, uh, PUBG is not there anymore, but there are alternative games, right? So it is up to you that how do you use this cheap data? Now, when this cheap data is available, knowledge becomes at our convenience. And the new education policy in India is looking for a gross enrollment ratio improvement to 50%. And that's why campus education is getting complemented with online skill education. So what authorities are suggesting, they are telling that uh, when you have campus education, with that, AICT, UGC, all are recommending that you have some skill curriculum embedded inside. And uh, of course, in SRISIM, we do that. We have a lot of online skill opportunities for our students through which they can hone their skill while they take the benefit of campus education. Now, my second slide talks about 10 top new age jobs. Pre-pandemic era, these jobs used to exist. Now these jobs have become rage. So when the organized sector has again come back uh, to the pre-pandemic level uh, of job creation, we find there is a huge demand for data scientists. Same thing goes for user interactive and user experience designers, those who design the website for enhancing user experience. Digital marketing specialists go to any uh, social media platform, whether it is Facebook, Insta, Twitter, everywhere you will find all the companies are present. And what they're doing, they're bringing social media influencers and YouTubers so that they can map the mind of the consumer. Blockchain technology is again something which is going to determine the future of the world in the next 10, 20 years. Blockchain is accepted, not necessarily cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrency is not still legalized in India. But blockchain we cannot avoid. Blockchain will adapt for any kind of financial transactions. It has got much wider perspective. So blockchain engineering is another thing. Social media managers, yes, of course, so when companies manage their social media accounts, they require social media managers. Online advertising manager. I surely know that youngsters today, the amount of ad you see in television or in radio, you see more ads online. And finally comes uh, where Mr. Tapush Bhuya began. That is the artificial intelligence and machine learning specialist. Of course, that requires some kind of modeling experience, some more advanced knowledge. And but you can always equip yourself with all these things. And this is most fortunate situation for the MBA students when they can adopt all this above 10 skills. These are acquirable by any MBA graduate by just a little perseverance and uh, self-motivation, I will say. Uh, Ahuja said talked about motiv motivation and self-motivation is the need of the hour for everybody. So you are skilled, the world is yours. The world will look at your skills. Now, when we are talking about culture of skilling, traditional jobs are also coming up at the same time, we have seen new platforms like Fever and Upwork. Millions of jobs are created in Fever and Upwork. And just I was listening to one of the interviews by one consultant of ABC Consultants, which is uh, the most known recruitment consultant in the country. They were telling that Upwork is not only giving you gig jobs, it is not only for the freelancers, it's offering permanent positions across the world. So what do they do? They do not take you into their country. But one job posting I was seeing, it is in Sweden. This is a contractual job for a year. You work for a Swedish company, and once they're happy with your performance, after the year, they will absorb you with all the full benefits. So one year is for your professional 
professional skill enhancement as well as a professional acquaintance with the company. And it's a full-time job which is offered in Upwork and uh, similar things are available in Fiber also. And when all these things are coming up, that the time government of India is doing their job. What are they doing? They're in advanced talks with various countries like Australia, Japan, United Arab Emirates for Mode 4 services. Mr. Vuya can tell us more about Mode 4 services, but as I have used this term in slide, I just tell you what is Mode 4 services. As per GATT and WTO definition, there are four modes of services exports. Out of that, Mode 4 services is the most profitable thing for the country as well as for the citizens of this country in which you can go abroad and work there. They give you the work permit. And these things need to happen in India because we have huge population, huge youngsters, and everybody may not remain in the country. So uh, departments like National Skill Development Corporation, EICT, they're in advanced talks with these countries, educational authorities, so that our degree, diploma, these things are eligible for our students, our candidates to work in these countries. And it is happening. And that's why AICT, UGC are encouraging to add skill-based curriculum in MBA studies. And these are the things which are going to shape the next few years at least. By the time you pass out, by the time you start working or you do your MBA and then you are in the job market, these five to 10 years is absolutely crucial for you. And once you are well aware about these things and you use the data power, data power means I'm talking not about data science or any hi-fi technology. What I try to mean is that the data power you get from Reliance Geo, data power you get from Vodafone Idea, or data power you get from Airtel. They give you cheap data at a very low price and internationally competitive price. So make best use of that, and definitely the world can be yours in the future. With that, I end my talk or presentation. I thank both the speaker and before I go for a formal vote of thanks, I would request Professor uh, Ahuja sir and uh, Mr. Vuya to take up two questions. First question is for Mr. Vuya. The question is, we understand that in the country now, mass recruiters are companies like CTS, TCS, Mindtree, etc. And uh, we understand that uh, you are from one of those companies, you are representing those companies. So what skill sets the fresh MBAs should have or how should they prepare themselves for entering into the companies like yours? Over to you, Mr. Vuya. Okay, thanks for the question. So am I audible? Absolutely. Okay, so uh, first of all, uh, mm -hmm. let me uh, clarify See, most of the people uh, think uh, to work in an IT company like TCS, CTS, or similar kind of companies, you need to have a software background and you need to be a software developer. It is partially true, partially not true. So even without, you know, so having your software background or development background, you can join an IT company equivalent to a software engineer. So opportunity is coming up. There are two kinds of categories of jobs are there. One is technical developer, another is functional developer. So the traditional MBA graduates who are passing out, they have subjects like sales and marketing, human resource management, finance management, operations management, or similar, you know, so streams. So, but believe me, without any technical background, you can actually acquire a digital platform certification. For example, suppose if you are a HR professional and you have specialization in HR, you must learn technology like it is provided by Oracle Compass. So it is a platform for the HR. So if you are trained and certified, so you are actually in front of the queue. So you have most probability to get a job. Similarly, equivalent technology in SAP. So there are success factor. So in HR, there are different streams like personal administration, organizational management, 
you know so performance uh, evolution payroll those kind of areas there are separate models are there it's a vast subject you can acquire one of those area and easily get certified within six months of time while you are doing mba you can specialize in a particular area similarly those who have the commercial background and want to be in finance domain believe me without technological knowledge or without you know so working in software platform you cannot be an accountant today so there is no conventional way of doing keeping the books of accounts so it is all on you know so software packages so you get certified with a package like sap fi financial accounting oracle finance or those kind of products if you are a profession of you are coming with a supply chain background so you go with the different kind of areas where you feel comfortable in supply chain there are streams like you know materials management so procurement inventory management those kind of models you can have with sap technology platform within 6 months you can actually learn and certify yourself so immediately you will get absorbed and if you want to be advanced supply chain planning like supplier planning you know or demand planning those kind of softwares you have n number of softwares but you need to know which one you should pick up and get certified because see this products life cycles is very short as i was telling you know so skill set is very fast changing but you are a soft, you know supply chain professional today you are on sap platform tomorrow on oracle next day you are on kinaxis uh, platform there are different kind of packages are there so at least you need to learn one of those product okay similarly for finance we have products operations we have product so my recommendation is that while you are doing you know mba and studying the core subjects you must acquire your package software package knowledge and get certified so this year my company is hiring 60000 fresh graduates from colleges and every saturday and sunday i am also part of that recruitment drive i am taking so many hundreds of you know interviews but we are not getting people right people for 60000 hiring at least 6 lakh people we need to interview okay so those kind of situations we are have similar kind of situation in all it companies but please acquire digital knowledge get certified with any of the relevant digital platform then your job is pakka that much i can assure any clarification on this uh, so uh, mr buya your answer was uh, crystal clear it is understood that uh, students uh, need to take a little extra effort alongside their MBA course and uh, prepare themselves well for the interviews in the IT companies. And uh, it is heartening to hear that uh, CTS itself is going to recruit 60,000 freshers, yes. 60,000 freshers. And uh, it is uh, really a big opportunity. And you mentioned about certain uh, certifications. So if I'm not wrong, these certifications are mostly free, right? Yes. See, there are actually Indeed. companies. Uh, for students they are providing free license they can get themselves registered for example uh, if you are a sales professional and you want to be a, you know sales and marketing specialized uh, professional in future so believe me if you don't have you know so digital platform background it will be hard to survive in sales profession so i can recommend one software platform that is salesforce.com okay. and that skill is scarce in the market if you are certified tomorrow you'll be hired that is a kind of situation and you can actually learn without any fees during while you are appearing for the certification exam you can actually you know so you have to pay a little bit fees but this is very nominal fees you can log into salesforce.com trailhead so they have the community of called trailblazer so within two three months you can actually acquire one of the the skill set which they are providing and you can get certified so you know so the the growth percentage of this company and the people who are implementing like us 35 to 40 percent growth year on year growth in last five years continuously cagr is 35 to 40 percent so you can imagine so all the global companies even the indian 
large houses they are all getting into you know so so implementing the digital platforms like salesforce.com so you can go to that thank you so much thank you so much for enlightening us on this issue uh, now i would uh, come to professor ahuja uh, sir would you like to uh, tell anything about the employability skills uh, how students can acquire those in this uh, challenging environment when there is so much of competition in the industry ahuja sir uh, there was a question for you that how students can enhance their employability skill in the midst of immense competition i think there is some connectivity issue and uh, anyway we are running short of time so what i do i come to the vote of thanks first and foremost my sincere thanks to our chairman and uh, managing trustee swami ji for inspiring us to use digital platforms for skilling up the students and providing us this kind of opportunities for conducting webinars etc which can benefit sri sim students as well as the entire student community who are aspiring for doing mbas etc uh thank you sir for sparing your time from your busy schedule my sincere thanks to professor k k ahuja for making a beautiful presentation to all the students and it was enlightening for us i would like to extend my thanks to mr tapush bhuiya for agreeing to spare some time for our audience and we can understand that you have huge job pressure and on saturday sundays also you are busy with the interviews but still on a short notice you agreed to come here and deliver a talk and uh, we are sincerely thankful to you and we look forward to more association with you in the future my sincere thanks to the entire audience all our faculty members students who have been in this platform today and made this webinar successful and i would like to extend my thanks to the technical team who were behind making this webinar today uh, with uh, the our own student faculty as well as the students community from other institutions so thank you all have a great evening and we look forward to meeting you again over to you kajal ma'am thank you sir we are overwhelmed to see participation from audience in various webinar and online events conducted by shresim we will share the invitation for our next webinar with you all soon thank you all and good night thank you